And with that, I have a very serious, very controversial question for you today. So are you feeling brave? Always, anytime. <laughs> Super. You know, this is a question that I feel uh, has a lot of resonance. It comes up all the time in society. And I really think that it's time to address it head on. So I had this message from a lady who says she's a social worker working specifically with girls. So I'm assuming that she's talking about girls from slightly more underprivileged backgrounds or uh, maybe more at risk girls. Mm. And she says that she has a concern that she would like to raise. Do the clothes that you wear affect a woman's sensuous thought process? If the clothes are really fitted or short, do they make do, uh, do those clothes make the girls feel more sensual? And she says, don't get wrong, I'm just concerned with the women who are living in this kind of um, situation. So again, I'm assuming that she means uh, girls who may not necessarily have the privilege of protection because mm. of their situation, maybe they're more at risk. And she says, um, do they need to take charge of what they need to wear on their do daily routine? Now, I just want to say that this is a question that really made me stop to think for a couple of reasons. One is you and I and so many other people have fought forever to make this point clear that what a girl wears is not her identity. And it doesn't mean that just because she's wearing short clothes that she's open to any kind of um, physical or sexual or even verbal abuse. That's one thing. And secondly, I know, and you know, because you're going to respond to this question, that this question is not what it seems to be on the face of it. Because when you read it first, the first this thing is, should girls who are more at risk, generally speaking, not be wearing these kind of clothes because they're putting themselves further at risk? And I think I really, really want you to address this. So one, uh, what I want to start with that I don't even think it's about risk or at risk, but I think this is something that everybody is talking about today. And it's a universal question. It's really not. It's something that's very close to my heart because I have teenage boys and I'm having these conversations with them uh, about, um, you know, what to wear and not, not what they wear, but what they find attractive, you know. And a debate... Uh, so like you said, let's let's set the stage here, because I know a lot of time then we get people questioning why we said something and what we said something. So this what we're setting here is that the safety of a woman is not in question here. Um, we have fought really hard to say that just because a woman's wearing a certain kind of clothing doesn't mean she's open to sexual harassment and sexual violence. We have we have said that women can be naked and they have the right that nobody touches them. Uh, so the safety of a woman cannot be measured by the length of her skirt. So that's established. Uh, it's also established as choice. You know, we have fought hard that women should be able to choose what they wear and she shouldn't be prescribed what they wear. So we're not even like, so we're keeping choice and safety. That's a given, you know, we're going beyond choice and safety here. Um, and we're talking about fashion, we're talking about a sense of dressing, we're talking about what we like and dislike, and that's the route we're going to take today. That's what we're going to talk and today. The, um, and the connection of sensuality or sexuality to fashion. Absolutely. And, you know, like you say that clothes, uh, you know, a lot of times you talk about, uh, you know, get ready, the full play, um, do the shringar, as you call it, and everything. So obviously, there's a correlation between how we feel as about ourselves based on fashion and clothing that we wear. That's why there are fashion industries and everything. Uh, but so yeah, I, you know, sorry, just to interrupt you here. That's exactly what I was getting at. Because, you know, when I put on a particular outfit, it makes me feel good. If it makes me feel good, it makes me feel more sensuous. And I thought about this when I read this question, because I thought, if it makes me feel more sensuous, it probably has the same impact on everybody. But I have reached this stage, I'm now 60 after years of understanding, I understand what I feel. Is it a problem with younger girls or so younger people? I think, yeah, so I think my, my discussion came from the idea of where are we deciding what centuries, right? And how do we do it? So you're saying it, it's taken you years 
to come to this point to understand. Um, so, you know, teenagers, young adults don't have the luxury of the time. You know, it's it's something that's happening currently for them. So how have they come to the process of decision making that these clothings make us feel sexy? Uh, and of course, over experience, the internal voice will come. However, what they're doing right now is going with what's prescribed to them. What is media saying? What is, you know, uh, what is visualized as attractive? And, you know, what is seen as attractive? And the problem today is that the only thing that visually is being gifted to them as attractiveness is short, tight clothes, revealing clothes. Let's put it that way. Now, they're not necessarily something they feel comfortable in. It's not an inner voice that's saying, oh, I feel so great in this, right? So the this is something that is being given to them. It's not theirs. And that's where I think the problem is. As soon as it's theirs, I think it's all fine. It's great if that's what they choose. Um, but I would wish that we would give them more choices. We, we would give them more choices to decide from. But unfortunately, I think the choice set today is very limited for young people. I think that you've hit the nail on the head. It is literally what we've been told looked sexy, rather than you thinking for yourself and saying, exactly. actually, I feel good in this. And th there is literally just the one option, isn't there? Yeah, and there is one. And today I was doing some work and a lot of people were talking about the male gaze, you know, and they were all talking about this idea that I don't know if I feel good about myself because I like it or the male gaze looks at me in a certain way and that's why I need to wear something, right? When people say, oh, you look so good in this, right? Then you feel like, oh, I need to wear more of this. But it needn't mean that you feel comfortable in what you wear? Are you like confident in what you're wearing? Are you feeling good about what you're wearing? Does it make you feel sexy? Like it might arouse the other person. The other person might love it, but are you getting aroused or are you getting, you know, are you feeling sexual or sensual wearing what you're wearing? Or are you completely like, oh my God, like when can I get home and get out of this? Or where can I get some layers on? Or can I wear some jackets? And that's the question I think they should be asking. Is this, whatever they wear, is it making them feel sexual? Like, if is it making them feel sensuous, you know, in some ways? Not and the guess, other, not the other, themselves. Is and it the, the, the problem is that this is the same message that's going out to the boys, isn't it? And so that's why it becomes like a problematic thing. It's like when we say the male gaze or the attractiveness or whatever, there is only one thing being sold to the boys also so it's not like they have a choice set you know and then they basically um encourage the idea that this kind of dressing is actually attractive and then the girls receive the idea that this strength of dressing so now we have young adults uh, who really only um, and, and, and and like I'm saying, like there is nothing wrong with revealing short, tight clothes. Like one is not saying that. One is saying that, um, you know, we've spoken about it, like when we did an episode on fantasies and uh, the other person had said, what are you wearing? And both of us had turned around and said, we are wearing saris because that's what makes us feel sexy. Um, but somewhere we had the space to decide for ourselves that it doesn't need to be one kind of clothes and there are other play, you know things that we wear that can make us feel sexy that i really feel is missing right now for a lot of us it is about the feeling about feeling sensuous uh, and feeling good about yourself and that could be for us it's a sari for somebody else it might be a full gown for somebody else it might be a burqa it is about that feeling which is really important um, and once you have that feeling um, you know you you your confidence your aura will give that message you know that I I feel good I feel beautiful today I feel sexy today and that message will go do you know strangely enough I had a chat with Roshni about this and for anybody listening in Roshni is on Instagram on Rosh93 She's an absolutely amazing woman who is um, out there to make people understand body positivity. 
And it's really interesting because when I said this to her, you know, she's very much about body positivity. Um, she gets trolled heavily for the fact that, you know, she will um, wear something that shows off more of her body deliberately. And people will say, you don't have the right figure for it. You shouldn't be wearing this and so on. And her point is that she has to feel empowered in her own body to feel good about herself. And when I talked to her about it, her first reaction, of course, was, but it is about self-empowerment. I have to feel sexy about myself. And then we talked this through. And like she said, that when she did not feel good about herself, whether she was covering herself up from head to foot or she was in the skimpiest clothes, it never felt good. And when you don't feel good about yourself, you feel insecure. And when you feel insecure, you become a target for other people a lot more. You're so much easier to control or manipulate. Absolutely. But the moment you find your inner comfort point, you could end up wearing almost anything. And even if somebody is trying to be inappropriate, you have that inner empowerment to say, hey, you know, cut it out. Absolutely. And so, you know, really the short clothes is not the problem. The pressure that that's the only way to look sexy or attractive is the problem. And as long as we're comfortable in whatever we're wearing, and as long as we feel sexy in whatever we're wearing, uh, it's all okay. Amrita, I just want to interrupt over here one moment and say that, you know, um, how do we, how, let's say for instance, now we're responding directly to this social worker. With limited time, limited means, how does she get this message across? Do you think that she can to the young girls? So I, I I think the main thing is that when we start thinking about clothes, I think what we need to start asking is how is this making us feel? You know, we we ask questions around how do I look? What do I look like? We haven't even touched on body image right now and how much. Uh, you know, conscious girls can get about their body more and more that there are more revealing clothes, you know, just adds a lot of pressure. Uh, but the main question we need to start asking is, how are we feeling? And what are we feeling, you know, and also that it really impacts our decision making, we need to start reflecting on our decision making around relationships and uh, being sexual, not sexual, whatever, you know, because once we are entering this world, there are, these are influences that make our decisions. So we should start, we should start having conversations, we should have, start have, thinking about it, just so that it doesn't take us by surprise, you know, like we're suddenly like, oh, like this is happening. What do I think about it? Do I like it? Do I not like it? What is it? So we should, you know, have those conversations with young people. So I guess, uh, let me just, see if I've understood you right. So basically, you're saying that talk to the girls, not so much about why are you wearing that, but say, when you put on those clothes, how does it make you feel? So get them to actually articulate and verbalize what it gets them to feel. That's the first thing I think you said. And the second thing you said is that um, to start becoming aware of what kind of um, excitement or sexual what, or what sexuality means to you. Like, is it a touch on the hand? Um, is this, like, do you visualize yourself being kissed, but nothing further than that? So becoming actually more aware of that. Yes, is that what you were saying? Yeah, so what we would do with young people is we would do a vis visualization. So some people would say, I just want to feel sexy and be sexy, but I'm not interested in doing anything, right? But I love this feeling, I love this feeling of feeling sexy and that's great. Some would say, I feel sexy, but I would like experimenting or not, you know, and then that is, and that experimenting could look very different things. But what we would encourage young people to do is close their eyes and think what extent feels comfortable and at what point do they suddenly feel like, no, I, I, this this makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to do this. And they would do it with like a green light and a red light and they would, you know, switch it. Uh, so it's, it's a great exercise to do for young people is to visualize what feels comfortable. And for some people, even somebody touching their hand would be like, I don't like this. And for some people, penetrative sex will look amazing. 
but it's such an individual decision. But this exercise young people must do to understand for them what are their limits and what makes them comfortable. We've come full circle. We need the sex ed. And we need to understand that sex ed is about emotions. It's in your head and how you're thinking, not just about the two parts of the body that fit together. Keeping all this in mind that, you know, it's people across the board. It's everybody out there, whether you're the parent, you're the teacher, you're the social worker. The first thing to do is not to actually get, be horrified at what somebody's wearing. Ask them, number one, what it makes them feel like. Does it make, does it make them feel good? Does it make them feel comfortable? Um, what is the clothes actually doing to them personally, individually? Does it make them feel good? And the other is that if they had a choice of wearing something else, what would that other thing be? Give them the chance to explore their sexuality because that you can't shut down. You cannot shut down somebody's um, sexual or sensuous growth. That's going to be right. So the thing to do is to encourage them to find options. So yeah, the, the two, the second more important thing is ask them to explore options of what else might make them feel sexy from within. Because as we've always said, your empowerment, your sexiness, your seduction comes from within. If you're wearing something really tight and short and feeling super uncomfortable and miserable, you're not going to be sexy. You're not going to look sexy. You're not going to feel sexy. And you're not going to end up feeling good about yourself. And so what I just want to add is as we're wrapping up is that if this if this video has felt, oh my God, where are they all going with this topic? That is it, what it looks like. And it, it might seem like, I wish Seema and I had hours to do a workshop on this and we don't. So it's, you know, doing it in 15 minutes. But that's the thing, what looks like a very superficial one group will say we have fought for women to wear what they want to wear. And one group would say, but women's safety is in question and appropriateness of clothes is there. It's not as simple as those two things. There are layers of what is being sold to us, what messages is coming to us. Do we have a choice set? Do we not have a choice set? Gender, patriarchy, like so many layers, decision making so many things come into this. Um, so do bear with us as you listen to this and try to unpick it because it is a complicated topic and we're trying to do our best to bring in as many issues into it. But I think the pressure that it only has to be one kind of clothing is what leaves me uncomfortable with the whole idea. Do you know what? I really hope that everybody listening has found this useful to some level, even if it's one point that you take away from mm -hmm. here. I think we're trying very hard to say that empowerment is a state of mind. And it's not the short clothes, but understanding how they make you feel. Whether they're being forced on you, because that's what the magazines are showing us, or whether it's something that's coming from within. So I hope that you take this away and in the way that it's meant to be. And I really, really hope that you can put it to good use because it is something that's going to be part of your life for always. So the earlier you understand it, the better. So as always, please do like, comment, subscribe on the video below. If you need to consult with Anvita, she is on. Anvita.madanbehel at gmail.com. And I am on info.seema.anand at gmail.com for any questions that you might want to send in. They will, of course, all be down there in the captions, so you don't have to worry if you didn't catch that. Um, take care of yourself, be safe, and we will see you over here soon.